All right, y'all, welcome back to Keeping a Comic. And today we're diving back into Ultimate Black Panther with issue number seven here. And let me tell you, there are some interesting developments in this one. And it's not just about Vibranium. Now, right off the bat here, we got Black Panther facing off against a group of charging Africans. Now, the reason why this is happening in the first place here is because Ra and Khonshu have established a new kingdom right outside of the Wakandan walls. They've been performing miracles, making big promises, and basically setting themselves up as the new gods of the African people, which has won over a lot of them to their side, which has also allowed them to build an army of followers who are now all in on their cause. Now, this puts T'Challa in a pretty tough spot here because he is the protector of Wakanda and Africa, but now he's forced to fight his own people. But of course, his number one rule is don't kill anyone. Now, with the energy that's stored in a suit from all of the attacks that he's been taking on, he knocks out a few of these newly empowered Khonshu soldiers. But then another wave of them comes charging on in. Now, at this point here, T'Challa calls in some backup, right? Because Storm and Killmonger, they're still in part of the Wakandan tribe right now. Now, he reminds them, pacify them but don't kill him. So then Killmonger fires off a sonic boom gear, which is just enough to be able to stop them in their tracks. And that gives Storm an opportunity here to come in and then blow them away with the wind, preventing them from causing any more harm. Now, Killmonger says something that I thought was kind of funny here. He says, it's gods and kings now, it seems. And then T'Challa responds back and says, listen, first, we need to find out Khonshu and Ra's weakness and then its kings destroy gods. And then Storm, with a little bit of a concern in her voice here later on, says to T'Challa, she's like, you are more kind than your enemy, and I hope that you do not come to regret that. But here's the thing, though, right? T'Challa's reluctance to kill is playing right into Ra and Khonshu's hands. They know that he won't go that far, which gives them more time to build their army. They want a war, while T'Challa... He doesn't. Now, Matron Amala from the Vodou Khan tries to get this through to him. Remember, back in issue number five of this series here, she warned him to prepare for war. She said it wouldn't be like anything that he's seen before. Nothing that his father has experienced. Nothing that his grandfather has experienced. It's been nothing that Wakanda would have experienced before. So him trying to avoid this war is not possible. It's inevitable. It's faith. She also told them not to let Ra and Khonshu get their hands on a new element. Now, if you're just picking up on the story, there is this new element that Killmonger and Storm had originally found and led Black Panther to it. It is an element that Matron and Mala has said is the opposite of Vibranium. And what this element does is that it produces or progressive life at a very accelerated rate. Now, Ra and Khonshu were basically terrorizing the people of Africa to find this, and then T'Challa had brought it back to a secure location, at least he thought it would be secure, but then Ra and Khonshu were able to steal it. And that is what they used to build that kingdom outside of Wakanda, the Wakandan walls, and what they are most likely going to use to wage war against Wakanda. So the next part here is very crucial to the rest of the series that we're going to talk about, right? So T'Challa goes to Matron Amala for advice. Now, as I mentioned before, Matron Amala is the mother of the Vodou Khan. I mentioned that in previous videos. And as I mentioned before, the Vodou Khan is a religious group that provides counsel to T'Challa. They believe that they receive messages here from the gods. Now, he asks her, are you saying that I should march the Dora Milaje in to kill the people who serve Ra and Khonshu? And she's like, yes. And she explains that while it's admirable that he doesn't want his people to die, that the choice isn't his, it's theirs. But T'Challa pushes back, right? He believes the war won't end with an army, but with understanding the source of the enemy's power. And he's talking about the element. And honestly, T'Challa's kind of starting to piss me off a little bit here because Ra and Khonshu, they have the element. They've built a kingdom. They've got followers and an army, and you know what they want next. They want Vibranium, and yet this dude is still hesitating here. It's very frustrating, and I know a lot of you have been talking about Ultimate Universe T'Challa, Ultimate Universe Black Panther, that he has not really been operating in the smartest way that we're used to seeing T'Challa operate in the 616, and he's doing the same thing again. 
So listen, T'Challa starts to suspect that Imala isn't telling him everything. And she points out that really his ultimate problem here is that he wants certainty. While the Vodou Khan, they embrace faith. Now, T'Challa reminds her that she said that Vibranium responds to the new element and that it can harness psychic powers, even breaking the laws of physics. But she lets T'Challa know that he is so stuck trying to understand something that is way beyond his understanding. And then Imala hits him with another kind of like reality check here. She says, you believe too much in science and in faith, which she goes back to again, there are more possibilities. That's the secret of the God. She's talking about raw and contrary. She's implying that they are operating on faith, not just logic. And then she kind of comes in here and drops this little bombshell. And I'm like, okay, Imala, what are you talking about? She says, what if vibranium is more than just metal? What if it has a consciousness, a will of its own? What if vibranium came from the cosmos like a seed? It's alive with its own agenda. And finally, she asks a question. Are you certain that Wakanda controls vibranium or does Wakanda serve it? And I'm like, okay, Imala, you have got my attention now. So... This leaves T'Challa questioning everything. Like while he's worried that he might not fully understand Vibranium, he's also concerned that Khonshu knows more about the other element than he knows about the, even the Vibranium that he's currently using. Like could, and also like could the element that Khonshu and Ra are using, which enhances life, is it possible that it can also destroy life as well? And he's saying all this while he's talking to his wife, Okoye. And he says something else, that he's starting to realize that his mind has been trapped by logic and reason. And maybe it's time to start thinking like a god if he wants to defeat a god. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like T'Challa, where has this T'Challa been the entire time, right? So he gathers Killmonger, Storm, and Okoye, and Shuri into a room. And he asks Killmonger if he can help them to find someone who's both a mystic and a scientist to help them with their situation. And I'm like, bro, uh, that kind of sounds like Victor Von Doom, but this is the ultimate universe. And in this universe, Doom is Reed Richards. So who potentially could it be here? Could it also be Dr. Strange? I don't know. Technically, he's not a doctor. He's not a scientist, right? He's a doctor. I don't know, guys. Semantics. Maybe I'm overthinking this. I guess we'll find out in the next issue, but I need to know who's this mystic scientist that we're going to see here. So Okoye, Storm, and Killmonger, they're off on a mission now to find this person, while T'Challa, he volunteers to stay back so that he can send a message to Ra and Khonshu. Now, before Storm leaves, Black Panther asks her to help him to make that statement so he heads down to attack a group of moon knight mercenaries and we finally get to see some more action in this issue because it's been a lot of talking so far so he asks aurora to bring the storm so that he can charge himself up and then he just starts to wreck the mercenaries i mean he goes ham no lettuce on these mercenaries here uh, some of you guys will get the reference. It's okay. And there is this like one shot right here where he like jumps through the crowd and there's like a few of them and he's like shocking them all at the same time and like suspense. And I'm like, this is kind of fire. Now there's a group of captives that were with these mercenaries, right? And T'Challa tells one of them, name the one who set you free. And the guy says the Black Panther. And then T'Challa is like, nah, bro, say it loud. And then they all scream Black Panther. So clearly T'Challa is working on reclaiming his name and putting the gods on notice. And he then asks another captive that was there. He says, what does Moon Knight promise you? And then he says, he promises that soon there will be no place here where he cannot see. So T'Challa responds, well, let him see this. And then he throws a surge of electricity into the air as Ra and Khonshu look on. But one last thing to mention here is that Khonshu says he has a kingdom built on sleeping power and he's talking about T'Challa and it will awaken. So it seems that there's more to this vibranium that even Khonshu knows about. And then he adds the cry of Wakanda will scream. Listen, the stage has been set. Who is this mystic scientist? Does Vibranium really have a will of its own? Is it actually alive? And what are the secrets of the element that Ra and Khonshu have as well? Find out next time, guys, here. But seriously, 
leave a like on this video here for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe for more here on this channel, join our Discord so that you can get more updates here outside of YouTube. And as always, guys, thanks so much for kicking it with Keeping the Comic.